Hey guys, welcome to Coffee and a Chat. And yes, looking good, Angie. <laughs> Been busy. Had to make some brownie deliveries this morning and yeah, it's a little bit crazy out there. The weather's turning ugly. But anyway, I got back and I just wanted to make this video. Um, I think it was yesterday that I said something about my grandma being mad at God because he made her a girl. And I thought about that later and, okay, didn't want anybody getting any ideas and thinking that this was anything like, okay, I've got to turn this light on because we're a little dark in here. Um, I didn't want anybody to think it was anything like, you know, some of the stuff that's going on nowadays. Hello. So here's the story. Um, I didn't always get to see my grandma Ediger that much, uh, as I was growing up, she lived in Africa much of the time. And, and I believe she was the house mother for a bunch of girls over there um, with missionaries. I know her daughter, my aunt and my aunt and uncle were over there uh, in ministry. In fact, I had a lot of relatives that were missionaries in Africa when I was growing up. And so we a lot of times didn't see them unless they were home on furlough. But um, later when my grandma ended up coming back to the States and staying here more, she um, was, and even then, she was involved in child evangelism, I, I believe. I think that was maybe the missions group she was with. I don't know. My aunt, if she's watching this, she'll know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, she worked with child evangelism and doing five-day clubs. I believe she was one of their directors. And if uh, she and my grandpa both had been before he passed away, he was a director with child evangelism. That I do know. And so um, a lot of people don't know what child evangelism is anymore. Um, it's, I don't know if it's even still around, to tell you the truth, or if it's just maybe not as prevalent as it was. But they're the ones that, for those of you who are older, like me, you might remember, they used to do uh, backyard five-day clubs. And it was kind of like vacation Bible school in somebody's backyard. And so that's what she did. And she loved it. She did that for a lot of years. Oh, she loved it. And so um, she was going to be in the, the town that I was in, uh, where I lived at the time. And I was married, had three kids by this point. I think my son was still just a little baby. And so she was going to be meeting with some people. And she said, you know, I'm going to be there for one night. Is it okay if I spend the night with you? And I was like, yes. I was super excited about that. She had never done that before. So I was just really, really excited. And so I got the guest room ready and everything. And when she got done with her meeting, she came over to our house. And so um, we had gotten ready for bed. And, and so grandma was into herbal teas and stuff before I was. And so she was like, before I go to bed, I'd really like to make a cup of tea. Would you like a cup of tea with me? And I was like, oh, yeah, absolutely. So she made some kind of herbal concoction and some seeds that were soaked in. I don't know. <laughs> but it was supposed to do all these great things for me. And so we sat down and had a cup of tea instead of coffee, but we had a cup of tea together. And instead, of, we didn't even end up going to bed that night. We ended up staying up all night long and talking to each other and just sharing some things. And in the conversation, she had told me that she'd always been mad at God. And I was like, Grandma, you've been mad at God? And she's like, yes. She goes, I've been mad at him because he made me a girl. And I'm like, what does that matter? You know, like, why would you be mad at God about that? And she said, because I always wanted to be a preacher. And in the church I go to, I can't be a preacher if I'm a girl. So she goes, I never got to do what I wanted to do. And now her dad was a preacher. And um, so, you know, I guess she wanted to follow in her father's footsteps. She was the oldest child. And her brother was a preacher. And um, her sister, her one sister was a missionary. And anyway, I just was like, I'm, I'm thinking about this and she's saying this to me and, and I'm like going, but grandma, didn't God kind of make you a preacher? I go, why'd you want to be a preacher? She goes, because I wanted to tell people about the Lord. Yeah. So he kind of made you one anyway. And she goes, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, 
you do these five day clubs and you teach these children about Jesus and you lead them to the Lord. I go, when you get done, you know, at the end of the month, you always send out your newsletter and you tell us how many children gave their hearts to Jesus. And you're always so excited about it. And, and so that's how God's been using you. And I mean, to me, it's kind of the same as being a preacher. It's just littler people. (laughs) And she goes, you know, I never thought about that. She goes, I guess you're right. It's kind of silly to be mad at God about that because he he did let me do what I wanted to do in life. It maybe didn't look like I thought it should look, but he did let me do what I wanted to do in life. And I, you know, I've thought about that. I've been thinking about that. There, um, my husband and I, Marvin, when we met, we both were lonely and we both were trusting God to either bring us a spouse or we'd just be alone, just us and him for the rest of our, our days. But we wanted to make sure we did it right. And God brought us to each other. Now, for many reasons, which we'll one day share with you because Marvin is getting closer and closer and closer to getting in front of the camera. And I want us to tell our story together. But in you know, in many ways... We were not what the other person was looking for. And it was kind of a surprise when God brought us together. And I I made a, I always do these needle points of scriptures and sayings and things when something, when God really speaks to me. And, And so when we ended up, when we got married, I said, sometimes God's gifts come in unexpected packages. And so I, I needle pointed it and it's sitting in our living room right now because that's us. We were God's gifts to each other, but we came in unexpected packages. And what my grandma wanted to do for the Lord, she got. It just came in an unexpected package. When I had my children, I I wanted to be a mom so bad I wanted to be a mom. And, and so when I actually, and I think I've said this in another video, but I ended up married to a man who didn't want children. So I didn't think I was ever going to get to have children, but it happened anyway. I still ended up getting pregnant. Didn't make him happy, but Hey, you know, it made me happy. I would have been happier if he'd been happy, but you know, whatever. But when I was in labor for the first time with my first daughter, And I went to the hospital, you know, I wanted to do natural childbirth. I didn't want any medication or anything. I wanted to just do this like, like my uh, Native American great, great grandmother, you know, you pop the kid out in the field, put him on your back and go back to work. I didn't want to quite do it like that, but I wanted to do it just the way it comes God's way. And so I remember going, thinking, you know, when I got into really hard labor, you could die from this pain. <laughs> it's a lot worse than I thought it was going to be. But oh well, I kept focused and I kept working at it. But I never could dilate over three centimeters. And yes, guys, here it is again. A little more information than you want. So la 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 just for a minute here, okay? And or you can listen if if you care. I don't care. It is what it is. This is what happened. I couldn't dilate beyond three centimeters. Couldn't pop a kid, especially... My baby was over nine pounds. She was almost 10 pounds. Could not give birth at only three centimeters, but they couldn't get me beyond three centimeters. And I was in hard labor. I was ready to push, but I wasn't dilated. And there was all kinds of stuff going on. Oh my goodness. They sent me to x-ray while I'm in labor. Oh, that was fun. (laughs) There was this nurse. I wish I could remember her name. I thought for years, I'll never forget her name. Susan. There it is. This nurse, Susan, she used to be an army nurse. That gal was tough. And so when they sent me to x-ray, the x-ray technician is like, you're going to have to step out while I take the picture. She goes, I'm so old. I ain't worried about nothing now. And that little gal there is in hard labor. I'm not leaving her. And so Susan did not leave me. She stayed right there and held my hand and talked me through my labor and my breathing. And then as soon as the labor, you know, as soon as my contraction would stop so I could hold still, they'd click a picture. And she stayed with me even when her shift was over. She did not leave until she knew I was okay. That woman, 
I don't know where she is today or if she's still around, but God bless you. because I needed somebody and there you were. So they found out that uh, among many problems that I have, that I had what they call closed pelvis. My pelvis was not going to open up. I was never going to go beyond three centimeters because it was fused shut. And that was as far as it could go. So baby's in distress. I'm in distress. I've got a, a fused pelvis. We're going to emergency C-section. Oh my word. That was the last thing I wanted to hear at that moment because I was going to deliver. You know, you're crazy anyway when you're in labor. And my husband kept trying to tell me, we're in danger. You're in danger. And I'm like, no, 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 that's somebody else. I'm fine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, anyway, they're like, we got to do an emergency C-section. It's like, no, I don't want a C-section. I want to deliver naturally. And they're like, you can't. It is never going to happen. And so, I mean, they were prepping me for surgery in the elevator going to the OR. We were, And, and there was a nurse because they had lost my baby's heartbeat. I, I didn't understand that all at the time. Figured it out later when they retold to me the story when I was more in my right mind. And they're like, here's what happened. And so they were counting down the seconds until they had to have that baby out because they couldn't get her heartbeat. And so she ended up coming into this world by emergency C-section. My next, my last two children, the only other two that I had, they came by C-section because there was no way for me to give birth. I would have loved to, if I was living in today now, I'd be like doing a home birth in a, my, my friend Shannon's a midwife. And I think I'd choose the birthing pool in in my house thank you please and my friend Shannon delivering my baby that's the way I would want to do it now but that I couldn't even you know if it was now I still I couldn't have done it because I had this problem and it changed things from what I wanted but did I get the children I wanted yes I still had my children they just came a little different way than what I expected and it re reminded me of a, a woman and her husband in our church when I was growing up. And they kept getting pregnant. They had no problem getting pregnant, but she could not carry her babies. And she could, so she never, she miscarried them all within the first trimester. And it was heartbreaking for them. And eventually the doctor said, no more, no more getting pregnant. It's, it's done a toll on you. You can't do this anymore. So we're, we're calling an end to it. No more trying to get pregnant. And she was devastated and he was devastated. And they're like, they wanted to be parents so bad. Well, sad thing happened. And uh, I think it was her sister and her husband. They were killed in a car accident and they left behind like four or five little kids with no parents. And so they ended up, and one of them was an infant. Anyway, they ended up adopting her nieces and nephews and raising them as their own, and they were a family, and, you know, they were even blood-related, you know, and I remember her later talking, you know, giving her testimony at um, a mother-daughter tea, actually, and she said, you know, I wanted something really bad, and in truth, God gave me what I wanted. I just didn't get it the way I wanted and she said, but I look back now, she goes, those are my babies. I love them to death. Wouldn't have it any other way. Miss my sister, miss, you know, and, and my brother-in-law. But she goes, I realized one day if I had had those other babies I wanted to have, we probably couldn't have done this because see, they had to, it wasn't like just a, oh yeah, you want to raise them and you want to adopt them. Sure. No problem. No, they had to go through the state. They had to take classes. They had to do all kinds of stuff before they were allowed to even, you know, have these children and adopt them and all. I think they did let them go home with them, but I mean, they were, they had to jump through a bunch of hoops and get permission and it cost a lot of money. There was a lot involved for them to become the parents of her nieces and nephews. If they had other children, they probably would not have been approved or been able to afford it. So she said, God knew things we didn't know. See here, they were parents deprived of children. And here were children deprived of their parents. And God brought them together and made a beautiful family. See, guys, sometimes we want something really bad. And we think it's supposed to come a certain way. 
but sometimes it comes to us in an unexpected package, not the way we thought it was going to come. But it's still there. He still gives us the desires of our hearts. To sometimes we have to be open to it coming in a little different way. I'm glad <laughs> that I had my children. I'm very thankful. Even if I felt, and believe me, I did. I struggled with that. And unless you felt like I felt and you've been through what I went through, you won't understand. But I know there's a lot of women out there because I've I've met them and we've, we've talked about it feeling really cheated when we had to have a C-section, feeling gypped, shortchanged, didn't get what we wanted. And other women who would rather have a C-section because I, you know, eventually women could schedule them because it was more convenient. And uh, I'm not sure that's good either. But, you know, a lot of those women, they didn't understand, you know, well, you, you had an easy way, although recovery afterwards is a lot more difficult. But, you know, you didn't have to go through this. You didn't have to go through... We wanted to. We wanted to. That's how we wanted to have our babies. We didn't get to. And so, yeah, I went through a time where I felt really cheated. I even went through a little bit of depression when I realized that I was never going to be able to give birth, that all my children were going to have to come in this other way. But I'll tell you now, I'm so thankful that there was another way for them to come because if there wasn't, I would have died in labor. My baby would have died well, in while well, I was in labor and all would have been lost, but God, he had a plan, he had a way and it happened. So that's the thought I want to leave you with today. Don't be like grandma and be mad for all those years. <laughs> it wasn't that bad, but she was angry with God until she realized, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I guess you did do what I wanted. They're just like Angie says. They're just smaller people. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are having a great day today. I've got some more work to do. A rainstorm coming in. I think now because I'm feeling a little chilly, I'm going to go put a fire in the wood stove and get me another cup of coffee to warm me from the inside. And um, I hope that, that things are going well where you're at. Uh, again, if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe. Make sure you like, share, comment, and if if you want to talk to me more privately where everybody can't read your comments, my email is in the description of this video, or it should be, <laughs> and feel free to email me. I love interacting with you guys. I love, love, love hearing what God's doing in your lives, okay? That's, that's what matters to me. So anyway, you guys have a great day. Stay out of trouble. Keep warm if you're in, and dry if you're in a situation like where I'm at. And I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.